Meanwhile, Dim Dean it trims a day off the shuttle's trip. Endeavor heads home. We're going to cover the landing for you live, 1232 Eastern. We'll have it right here in the newsroom. Minutes from touchdown, Space Shuttle Endeavor is returning to Earth. We want to go live to CNN's Miles O'Brien at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. About 10 well, minutes. Interestingly, oh. just a little side note. Uh, for the first time ever, the shuttle is landing using GPS or satellite navigation capability. And they are now flying on those satellites. They've never tried that before. They've always used ground-based system called TACAN. He's landing a multi-billion dollar spacecraft. So there's a lot of pressure on him, and he knows that the world is watching. So you want to do your very best. You get one shot at it. You can't go around and try it again. So all the years of training are finally coming together for him in this. And he's got a little bit of a crosswind, so it's going to be a, a tough landing today. Yeah, it, it, this will keep you on your toes, and let's talk about this space now for uh, over two weeks, and he's been adapted to zero gravity, and now he's back in, in one unit of gravity. When he will feel very, very heavy, and things aren't going to feel the same way they have over the past two weeks. So it'll be We're tough. We've seen the first pictures, long long range pictures uh, and yeah it's been up there for two weeks I imagine you get a little lightheaded and you really have you have to have um, be really on your toes for this also on board the space shuttle we have the pilot Charlie Hoba they call him uh, Scorch and of course a lot he's in the right hand seat beside Scott Kelly uh, assisting him with the landing we're gonna see a view from his seat in just a little bit with the heads-up display Barbara Morgan of course the uh, teacher turned astronaut uh, who fulfilling the, the unfulfilled mission of Krista McAuliffe some 21 years ago, along with her, Tracy Caldwell, mission specialist Alvin Drew, Rick Mastracchio, and Dave Williams rounding out the crew. Uh, this mission was a, a successful mission um, by all accounts, Eileen, but a lot of people are thinking about that gouge in the aft underbelly. Um, obviously, the shuttle has made it through peak heating, but uh, what are your thoughts on that? Would you, if you were up there, would you have preferred they repaired it? Well, I would have to put really my trust in the engineers. They have a fantastic group of engineers on the ground that they've been simulating these kinds of uh, damages for, well, since the Columbia accident, which has been almost five years now. So they have ways to duplicate the damage on the ground, to do analysis, to put it in a test chamber, which we call an arc jet facility. Which might lengthen its time in the hangar. And that's important, too, because NASA is trying to fly so many missions before the shuttle program ends at the end of 2010. Yeah, that's right, Miles. We've got uh, three shuttles left to fly this mission, these missions over the next three years. We've got about 14 flights left in the shuttle program, and every one of them has to go just right to get the space station built by the end of this decade. Let me tell you, you're talking about Scott Kelly. They're, they're, he's been in space for um, two weeks. What, did, what does a, a crew member do? Because there's an adaptation process, you're used to zero gravity, suddenly you're feeling the pull of gravity and you're trying to fly this vehicle. What do you do to guard against being lightheaded, dizzy, anything you might associate with being in space for that long? Well, this is interesting because we, not a lot of people know that we drink salt water before we come back to Earth. Um, you can imagine coming back in zero gravity, the, your, your blood is being pulled down to, you know, down to your feet. So you get very lightheaded. So to counteract that, we drink salt water. And you can put a little bit of sugar in it, or you can make it taste like chicken soup, uh, but it still doesn't taste very good. You have to drink this stuff, and it actually builds up your, um, your, your body's uh, concentration of water. And it'll help you not only land, it have a, a, a little more um, um, about you when you land, but it'll help you get out of the seat and walk around. And if there's an emergency after landing, and you need to get up and get out of there fast, you're going to need that extra hydration to help you get out. We just heard the very distinctive double cannon shot sonic boom, so the shuttle is not far away from here. Can't see it because of the, the uh, light cloud cover here. Pretty soon we'll be able to see what uh, they're seeing on board. They have very specific speed and um, the, the angle at which they drop, which is very important to point out to people. An airliner lands uh, at about 150 miles an hour and comes in at about a three degree glide slope. A shuttle does what, Eileen? Well, the shuttle will be landing at over 200 miles an hour and the glide slope is 20 degrees, which is very, very steep. You're about seven degrees steeper than a commercial airliner. And the shuttle flies very, very nicely. I think what Scott Kelly is seeing right now is that the shuttle flies a lot crisper and a lot more responsive than the training aircraft that we use. So I think he's going to be pleasantly surprised. You know, this is his first uh, 
landing in the shuttle, but I think he'll, he'll find it a very nice flying machine. Those pictures of that head-up display uh, indicating on it the altitude, the speed. And when they say on at the 90, Endeavor, what do they mean the by 90. that, Eileen? Well, they're on energy. So <clears throat> what the crew is interested in is that, you know, you, this is your first attempt at landing, so you can't land too short, you can't land too long. You have to be right on altitude and right on airspeed. The combination is called energy. So he's on energy at the 90, 90 degrees from, uh, which he's actually just at a 90 degree angle from turning on to final. And he's probably seeing the runway right about now. And nice clear view today of the runway. And he'll be flying off of lights. They're called precision approach uh, indicators. You want to have them red and white showing you're on glide slope. You're following your microwave landing system. And then he'll transition to a ball bar light, which is on the runway. And that will help him go to a three degree glide slope and touch down just like an airline. One minute and 20 seconds to touch down. Let's listen to NASA for just a moment as, as they be, get into that so-called pre-flare area. <clears throat> Endeavor's on path for the targeted uh, landing at the Kennedy Space Center. One minute to touch down. Endeavour's descent rate is 20 times higher and 7 times steeper than a commercial airliner on this final approach to the Kennedy Space Center landing facility. Why? Why are you taking my mic down? The landing gear is down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Nose gear touchdown. Deploying of the drag chute to delay to assess uh, the conditions of the crosswinds on the orbiter as it rolls out on the uh, runway. 1 5 at the Kennedy there Space Center. You see Center. the uh, Space Shuttle Endeavour having landed. Uh, Eileen, it looked like a textbook crosswind landing from where I sat. What did you see? Well, it looked beautiful to me. If you were looking closely, you could see that he touched down on one wheel first and then the other one, which shows it was crosswind. They put the drag chute out a little bit late, which they do in a crosswind. And right now the crew is feeling pretty darn good that they've had such a successful mission, but they're also feeling very heavy from the effects of gravity. So it'll take them a little while for them to get, um, uh, to get assimilated to the Earth's gravity where they can get up and actually walk out of the shuttle. Roger, we'll stop Endeavor. Congratulations, welcome home. You get given a new meeting to higher education. A new meeting to higher education. Barbara Morgan, of course, the teacher turned astronaut, fulfilling the mission that began with the Challenger. As you look at that infrared shot, by the way, it almost looks like a, um, a steam locomotive. That is the exhaust from the auxiliary power units, which uh, power the control surfaces of the uh, space shuttle as it comes in. It's uh, actually uh, kind of a little furnace that shuttle burns and do all the switches and help reconfigure uh, whatever needs to be done before the shuttle is taken back into the hangar. That takes several hours. Well, some, uh, yeah, and as we look at a replay of that landing as they come in, we can take a closer look here at what you're talking about with this crosswind landing. Uh, the, the wind was kind of hitting him on the left side here as you look at uh, this head-up display, the pilot's eye view. And the goal there is to tilt it just a little bit into the wind, right? Well, you do want to, uh, we call it crabbing into the wind, just aim into the wind a little bit. That way you can keep the shuttle aligned right down the center line. And of course, every pilot wants to land on the center line because it shows that you've made a good landing. But it's also important to keep the control. The runway uh, down at Kennedy is only 300 feet wide. And there's a moat. There's water on both sides of the runway. So it's very, very important that you keep the shuttle straight down the runway.